In almost any practical organic reaction, the reactants are going to have some window dressing that's unimportant to the actual chemical change taking place in the reaction. For this reason, it will be important to separate the atoms actually engaged in a reaction from those that remain unchanged throughout the reaction conditions. In a nucleophilic substitution context, this comes to identifying the three key players, the nucleophile, the leaving group, and the electrophile. In this video, we're going to discuss strategies for doing this. They're going to draw on some of the foundational ideas we've seen previously about how to identify nucleophiles and electrophiles, and also invoke this analogy of nucleophilic substitutions with proton transfer processes to think about what makes a good leaving group, which we'll explore in more detail in the next video as well. Let's begin by identifying the nucleophiles and electrophiles in nucleophilic substitution reactions. Nucleophiles are locations of high electron density, high partial or even full negative charges. The electrophilic atom, on the other hand, is associated with low electron density, often high partial positive charge. In a practical sense, this means that electrophiles will tend to be heavy atoms connected to extremely electronegative atoms, such as halogens, so that the bond between the electrophilic atom and, say, the halogen is polarized toward the halogen, leaving the carbon with a significant partial positive charge. Nucleophiles, on the other hand, will tend to be on the negative ends of dipoles, so they may be relatively electronegative atoms, and they'll often have non-bonding lone pairs, and these will be the true players in terms of electron flow in nucleophilic substitution reactions. Good nucleophiles contain highly concentrated electron density, and as we just stated, this amounts to very large partial negative charge or even full negative charge in the form of a negative formal charge at one or more atoms. The examples of nucleophiles we're going to look at here will corroborate this. But keep in mind that even if you've identified a molecule as a nucleophile, it's important as well to focus in on the most nucleophilic atom, the specific atom that's going to donate electrons within the nucleophilic molecule as well. So you may need to compare different atoms within the nucleophilic molecule to conclude how the reaction is actually going to proceed. For example, in the acetylide, we do have a choice between using the non-bonding lone pair on carbon as the electron source and using one of the pi bonds as an electron source. Hopefully it's clear to you by now that the non-bonding lone pair will be a better source, will be a more reactive pair of electrons than the pi electrons. And so the lone pair bearing carbon which also happens to have a formal negative charge, is going to be the true electron source of the acetylide anion. Because they're perfectly analogous, the same is true of the cyanide anion, which reacts almost exclusively at its carbon atom. Although cyanide is interesting because both the carbon and the nitrogen bear lone pairs now. And there are certain cases, depending on the nature of the electrophile, where the nitrogen reacts. Iodide and any halide anions are a no-brainer because they're monatomic ions, and all they can do is react using lone pairs on the single atom that's part of the ion. We can often use formal charges as a guide to identify the key atoms of nucleophiles as well. In the azid anion, for example, it doesn't make much sense to use the central nitrogen as a nucleophile. In fact, it has no lone pairs, and so that makes it unlikely to act as a nucleophile, and it has a formal positive charge which is another factor that argues against its acting as an electron source, giving electrons away. Instead, one of the two equivalent nitrogens on the periphery of the molecule will act as a nucleophile here. In thiolates, Sr-, amid anions, Nr2-, and alkoxide anions, Or-, the nucleophilic atom is exclusively the heteroatom bearing formal negative charge. And all of these are great nucleophiles as a result of the formal negative charge, the fact that they're anions. I'll leave it up to you to think about which of these three you would expect to be the best nucleophile. Neutral molecules are generally worse nucleophiles than their anionic counterparts, than their conjugate bases, but they can still be quite nucleophilic at the heteroatom bearing the lone pair. For example, in a thiol, the sulfur can act as a nucleophile. In an amine, the nitrogen can act as a nucleophile. And in an alcohol, the oxygen of the hydroxyl group can act as a nucleophile. Once again here, something to think about is the relative nucleophilicity of oxygen versus nitrogen versus sulfur 
in these structures. And if you want to put a quantitative spin on this, you can consider the pKa of the conjugate acids of these nucleophiles, H nu, or for the neutral nucleophiles, H nu plus. The more acidic the conjugate acid is, the less reactive in both a basicity sense and a nucleophilicity sense we would expect these nucleophiles to be. Good electrophiles are linked to highly electronegative or electron withdrawing atoms or groups and we refer to these linked groups as leaving groups or nucleophuges. Because these groups pull electron density towards themselves they leave whatever they're connected to with a partial positive charge, the characteristic of a good electrophile. And so in identifying electrophiles we actually really focus our attention in general on the leaving group. And so while technically speaking R in this structure is the electrophile, we identify it as such by noting that what it's connected to, the bromine atom, wants to depart with a pair of electrons. Alkyl halides and other types of functional groups that involve heavy atoms connected to bromine, chlorine, or iodine are classic electrophiles in nucleophilic substitution reactions. But other players can come in here as well. In a future video, we're going to take a look at the sulfonate leaving groups, which are quality leaving groups because what departs resembles sulfate, an extremely stable conjugate base. And keep in mind that leaving groups need not be neutral. Positively charged leaving groups generally have a strong desire to depart with a pair of electrons, leaving behind a neutral fragment. In this case, the very stable neutral molecule OR'2.